perspectives and learnings uh, from the panelists that will go into making the supply chain more resilient and the guidelines on the sustainable operations and the best practice. Uh, moving to our next session, I would like to invite Mr. Vikram Damodran, Chief Innovation Officer at DRGO India for the industry special address. He will bring his perspective as a practitioner and evangelist of entrepreneurship and innovation, driving large scale business initiatives as one of NASCOM COE's esteemed strategic partners. Over to you, Vikram, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Vinci. A uh, real pleasure to be addressing this forum. Uh, I'm not able to switch my video on. I think the host has disabled my video. If you could just enable it, please. Sure. Got it. Thank, Thank you. you. So what I'm going to do today is uh, fundamentally give you my perspective on how you know uh, supply chains in India are evolving. And uh, my background before I joined Diageo is I spent 20 years in GE healthcare and uh, the industry was very different. Uh, the level of automation was different. The level of systems and processes were different. But then on the other end of the scale, uh, coming to a FMCG kind of a space, uh, what I saw was a whole new world and whole new applications and possibilities for how supply chains could evolve. Having said that, I developed a very simple model in my mind as to how I see supply chains evolving over time. Uh, the first thing is I actually uh, call it the destiny model, D-E-S-T-I-N-Y. And I'm just going to uh, elaborate that for you. In my mind, uh, supply chains today are data rich. And that's what D stands for. Uh, the amount of data that we generate right from the time we decide to procure a raw material till we procure it, till we move it from its source to its destination, process it, go through the manufacturing uh, uh, output, uh, package it, and then send it out to consumers until the time the consumer actually engages with it. What you're creating is a data-rich trail, uh, which pretty much starts at the beginning of the supply chain and actually doesn't die. It continues to live with the consumer. And I think that is a very, very interesting aspect of supply chain uh, that is up for the grabs. And the more you leverage it, the better off we are in terms of harnessing the data, both from uh, an analytic standpoint in order to drive efficiencies, productivity, output, but more importantly, also think about how does it add value to consumers on the other end of the spectrum. So that's the first uh, alphabet in destiny, D, data rich. The second one, uh, for a long time, uh, especially in FMCG, we've been talking about consumers and experiences that consumers enjoy. Uh, little have we thought about how supply chains actually enable those experiences. Most of the experiences that we enjoy today are front-end in nature, which is marketing-driven and also enabled at the flag end of the supply chain, which is either digitally enabled or, uh, you know, or software enabled, so on and so forth. But the beauty of uh, a data-rich supply chain, therefore, is to actually bring the consumer backward integrated into your supply chain model. And a lot of companies have started doing it. Starbucks does it really well. A whole bunch of companies, um, you know, somebody was talking about cocoa production and how they track and trace their products through the system. I think that experience of bringing the consumer integrated backwards into your supply chain uh, has a whole bunch of benefits, right? As a consumer, I'd love to know where my products came from. Was it responsibly sourced? Um, was it ecologically sourced? Uh, who was the actual craftsman who, you know, from whose fields the barley grew in? And I think there is so much space for consumer engagement, for consumer affinity, for brand loyalty, for brand equity. And the role that supply chain can play in, in this world is so massive that I think uh, the opportunity, if done well, if uh, architected well, can actually add immense value both to consumers and to the company alike. So that's the second alphabet of the word destiny, experiential. The third one, uh, and I think uh, one of the previous speakers on the panel, Rajeshri, uh, very passionately spoke about sustainability. The interesting thing is sustainability, in my view, doesn't really have any one definition, right? Uh, and there's no such thing as the only source of truth as far as sustainability is concerned. And therein lies the opportunity. Uh, so sustainability uh, is a point in time exercise because the minute you start doing an end-to-end -end sustainability model, 
the more you realize how much out of control your entire model looks. Because when you look at an average supply, the quantum of work that you own in your vertically integrated model is so small compared to the amount of work that happens outside that vertically integrated model. And therefore your capability to control or influence an outcome with respect to sustainability is also limited. Now, the question is, being data rich, what can you do to therefore drive sustainability metrics that actually make a difference? First in your vertically integrated model and then influence outcomes for other systems that are contributing to the products that you produce. And I think uh, the way I see it, given the amount of technology infrastructure that's going in uh, to supply chains these days, I believe a horizontally integrated model, not just vertically, but horizontally integrated models is the way uh, to go as far as sustainable supply chain systems are concerned. So rather than look at it as sustainability, I think we should start moving our frame of mind to think about sustainable supply chain systems, which is more holistic, which looks across the board rather than just your vertical. Therefore, you're much more cognizant of the footprint or the lack of it that you're creating uh, in, in the environment. So that's the third piece of sustainable supply chain systems. The next alphabet, T, uh, to me, is technology forward. No doubt, we're already talking about Industry 5.0. Uh, we're clearly talking about uh, supply chain systems that have evolved over time. We've spoken enough about the world speaks enough about AI. Right? The world speaks enough about machine learning coming into the fray. But I still believe that we're still scratching the tip of the iceberg when it comes to using data. Uh, and the only way forward is going to be technology intensive. So the more we embrace it, the less of the friction. The more we embrace it, the better the output. And the more we embrace it, more the efficiency. Uh, and I think technology is something that we can't avoid anymore. Um, in India, you do have the challenge of uh, the capex cost, the maintenance cost, and the sheer uh, transformation cost of bringing technology into uh, a supply chain ecosystem that hasn't been extremely technology driven. But the good news is with the kind of startups uh, and their activity in this ecosystem in terms of uh, supply chain transformation, a lot of it, just like how uh, Moore's laws applied to the cost of chips coming down, the cost of transformation is also dropping drastically. So you're, you're in a beautiful point in time where you can make that switch to a highly technology intensive infrastructure that can give you all the benefits uh, that you want to gain out of your supply chain. The next one uh, is uh, the letter I. And I, in my mind, again, I'm going to go back to where I started. Data rich also makes it very intuitive. So the way I see it, the supply chain by itself is becoming far more predictable. Uh, in, it's gone, the, gone are the concepts of just in time. It's more about being ready at any point in time ahead of time. And I think that's, again, Another efficiency, especially in India, given the fragmented nature of our market, I think there's a ton to gain from an intuitive supply chain system powered by data. I think there's a lot of power in that. Uh, N for me stands for native, native to the industry. And uh, customization has become key. While you know we all moved from one era of manual systems to uh, digital systems that were fundamentally offering large-scale implementations of ERP and planning systems, we are now moving into a highly customizable era where you can literally tweak and tone your supply chain to cater to your consumer's needs. And that offers immense flexibility, productivity, and efficiency. So nativity of your architecture is extremely important. And the last piece, uh, my favorite is in India, I strongly believe supply chain systems are still young. And that's why young and nebulous so what it gives you is an opportunity to leapfrog. So while you're young and nebulous, you have the opportunity of a clean sheet of paper to really architect yourself in industry 6.0 for all you care. And I think therein lies the true power of destiny, controlling your destiny for supply chain systems in the country. So that was my take on how I see supply chains evolving in the country. Uh, I'm gonna pause here, see if you have any immediate questions, but otherwise it was a pleasure addressing this forum. Thanks for having me. Lindsay, back to you. Thank you, sir, for such an insightful address around uh, customer centricity, customization, as well as deriving value from the data infrastructure. 
and embracing horizontally integrated supply chain system around sustainability. Uh, we look forward to your continuous engagement in our future initiatives as well. 